Hi guys! Today we're going to talk about boundaries and how safe and unsafe they can be depending on where you're at or what you're doing in your therapy. Now you're going to see my eyes going down because I'm reading. It's easier for me to discuss something serious when I'm reading. Okay, remember these are just tips based on my own experience which you may use or not use. So if you're just starting therapy for DID, I recommend giving it a year before fully 100% giving your trust away. I know sometimes this is hard as littles can attach easily. I find a great boundary is a good thing to consider, especially under my own experience going through this process. Here's an example. In a year's time, if you think hypothetically on the subject of your therapist or mental health care provider, would you, as a parent or a pet owner, trust your therapist or mental health care provider to babysit your child or pet? If, hypothetically, you would, then trust has been earned enough for your little alters and your story to be safe with that provider. This is, of course, my personal journey and my personal safety measure. If, hypothetically, you would not feel safe that that provider watch your pet or child, this may not be a fit for you or your littles or your children inside to work with this provider. I said may. Um, Hence, I'm going to point out the Colin Ross parental role again because that is a huge thing that he recommends for therapists to provide to heal DID. Now, once trust is earned, a set of boundaries for each altar must be made. To do that, you need to you need each altar to work with the mental health care provider and to make a set of rules of what each altar likes and does not like in that therapeutic setting. Okay, now I'm going to show you my own example of that. Okay, and there's a sheet here. Okay, and on this sheet, each altar is asked by my therapist, what are things that scare you most in therapy? And what are things that you like most in therapy? So what this does is these two questions um, gives your altar that means of trust and support because then the therapist knows what this altar likes and does not like. This is a great set of boundaries for each altar and it will help in your healing process and it'll also make therapy go a lot quicker. Okay, now another boundary I wanna bring up um, that needs to be made and discussed is the role of mental health care provider boundaries outside of the office. Rule number one, Um, For the phone, texting, and emailing, this needs to be established immediately. Can you text? Can little text? Can you text at night? Can you call at night? All therapists or mental health care providers have rules to keep themselves safe and to have their boundaries met. And if you, as a patient, do not ask what these sets of rules are, this can hurt your therapeutic relationship. So right away, you need to work out, can I call you at night? Can I text you at night? Can my littles do this? Can they do that? This gives a set of boundaries for you as the host and the older alters to keep a calm therapeutic setting and trust. Number two, can your therapist go with you to exams, assessments, and or clinic visits or other public settings? Absolutely. Um, But... This has to be planned ahead, and again, rules must be set to protect not only you, but your therapist. So if you have a male therapist, per se, he may not want to cross that boundary of being in an exam room with you. Um, However, can he be waiting outside the door or outside the hospital to support you or talk to your medical staff? That's awesome. Yes, he can do that. The idea here is to help make your assessments and health easier to manage with your DID. This is something that can be discussed ahead of time as well. Uh, My personal experience, 
on this is that my therapist is female and she goes where I go to the hospital or clinic setting. She goes with me to assessments, MRIs, you name it. Um, reason is that I switch a lot and she can discuss with medical staff my condition and she can also monitor and document my health care records, you know, for, for future issues. So my doctor and her are very close. Um, this helps support me and helps me feel safe. Um, bad boundaries, however, is something um, we need to discuss. And bad boundaries, um, your therapist won't find helpful or therapeutic for you. So per se, you invite your therapist to a wedding anniversary you want to go to. Um, this can not only put you in a setting that crosses home and life and therapeutic issues, it also hurts your therapist um, um, because they are not focused on the subject of your healing if this is what they're doing. These boundaries are hard and confusing to patients with DID. Patients are scared and will take time even if it puts their therapist at risk. So, you know, like me, I've had a lot of experience with this, so I don't push those boundaries. Did I when I first started? Yes, I did, because I didn't know what was okay and what wasn't okay. So a therapist must be kind yet firm, hence Colin Ross's parental role. As a parent, as, as a therapist, they have to make a parental decision on what is best for you and put them boundaries in place. Um, can you visit places with your therapist? You know, like uh, past places where you've had memories. I want to say yes. Um, it can be helpful and it can open up subjects about your past that you may not remember. However, the trip must be planned ahead of time and boundaries and rules must be set ahead of time. Hence, property guidelines, permissions, how your therapist feels about you being in their car or that you may have to drive separately or find a ride, ETC. Um, and so that's something you might want to discuss as well. Um, that's all I got. I hope that some of this was helpful and the explanations were helpful. And again, always ask your mental health care provider or you're welcome to show my video if it will help with this. Loves. Bye.